Good morning. It's Sunday. It's the Lord's Day, and all are welcome here at Zion Lutheran Church. Come on in. Good morning, and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. Welcome to all who is viewing our services today on Facebook and on YouTube. God bless you, and God bless your worship. I have a card to read that came from the Medina County Food Pantry, and it's a thank you card to Zion Lutheran Church, and it reads, to Zion Lutheran Church, thank you so very much for the donation of food and cash to the Medina County Food Pantry in February. Now we have moved, made the move to the new building that your church so generously helped to build, and the donated foods are now occupying the space on new shelves in the new building. Hope all of you might stop by to visit sometime after this whole virus thing is over. May God our Father bless your church as you, you are all blessed by the food pantry and uh, blessed by God also to help this food pantry. Thank you very much with gratitude, Medina County Food Pantry, Board of Directors and Volunteers, Jeanette Black, Correspondent. And with that, we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people say, Amen. We sing our opening hymn, I am trusting you, Lord Jesus. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you, trusting you for full salvation, free and true. I am trusting you to guide me, you alone shall lead. Every day and hour supplying all my need. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, never let me fall. I am trusting you forever and for all. Confession and Forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep a watch over sin, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you there is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All of your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is free, whose free and abounding gift of God's grace for you is given to you this day and always. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with all of you. And all of God's people say, Amen. Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you showered us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water and for water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. 
Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The prayer of the day. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and you lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared for us in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God now speaks to us in Holy Scripture. From the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. This serves as the text for our sermon today. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you bow your heads and fold your hands as I pray my pulpit prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Are you good at your vocation? To have someone say so is a compliment, one that we'd like to hear. Yes, we strive for good workmanship in whatever we do. Quality is our goal. Laziness and good enough is something we want to avoid. Many people are good at their work, but how many are so good that no one else could do their work as well? Mothers are one special person that are that way. And next Sunday, May the 10th, is this day, the day that we celebrate and honor our mothers everywhere. Who else could take care of a baby and a three-year-old, plan and prepare all the daily meals, do the grocery shopping, pay the bills, balance the checkbook, and still greet her husband at the end of the workday with a smile? And sometimes there is a successor to that role, the daughters of today's mothers. There is one, however, that needs no successor, no one to complete his work. He is the good shepherd, Jesus the Christ. And as the good shepherd, Jesus is unique. He's in a class all by himself. Others also have been shepherds and still are today. The prophets and the other leaders that shepherded God's people before Jesus came to earth and the apostles and the pastors and the teachers that have been doing so ever since. Many have been leading and guiding God's people, 
but not in the way that Jesus did. One aspect of shepherding puts, him in, puts Jesus into a class that's all by himself. Jesus is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. Many have given their lives for others. You may have heard your mom say that I would give or I have given my life for you. Now she may be referring to some sort of personal sacrifice that she made for you. Some that are known to you and some that are known only to God. Many among the passengers aboard the Titanic stayed on that sinking ship so that women and children could get into those lifeboats and be saved. Such sacrifices deservedly draw our admiration. However, no sacrifice, no sacrifice approaches that of the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. No sacrifice cost as much as his did. He is the divine Lord of the universe who suffered and died for our sins. No other sacrifice accomplished as much as that of the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. A human life may be extended for perhaps seven or eight decades. Jesus saves lives for an eternity. Jesus died so that millions, maybe even billions of precious human souls may live forever in heaven. And there is some truth to the assertion that no person really knows our inner selves. No matter how close you are to one another, no matter how long that you have lived underneath the same roof together, to some degree, there is always going to be some part of us that no one, no one will really ever know. Only in a limited sense can we always be, can we always be a part of, of, of that person at any time. But you know what? To say, I know just how you feel, is we can only say really in a limited sense. Some experiences that people have are so private and so personal that no one, no one can share them with us. But Jesus, the good shepherd, he knows us. He knows us inside and out. He knows us through and through. He knows us better than we know ourselves. The desperate prayer, Lord, tell me what's going on inside of me, is not a foolish prayer at all. Jesus knows even when we don't know. Jesus, our good shepherd, knows us and we know him, as our text says. We know him because he revealed himself to us in the Bible. He made himself known to us in the incarnation of Christ in the, in the flesh in whom this divine is united now with the human. And we would never have discovered such mysteries of the eternal God had he not revealed them to us in Holy Scripture. He knows us, and we know him. Jesus came among us for a very, very clear purpose, my friends in Christ. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. This marvelous fact distinguishes the gospel from all other sources of faith and hope in this world. Jesus is the good shepherd who is not content with just knowing that the 99 are safely in the fold. What does he do? He goes after that one lost sheep, that one lost lamb. And when he has found that lost one, he lovingly gathers it up into his loving arms and he carries it home, rejoicing. The enthusiastic and joyful new Christian now may exclaim, may exclaim sometimes, I found God. But no Christian, no Christian has ever really found God. Rather, God has found every one of us by seeking us after us. But it is true, of course, that, that the Lord uses his servants, that's you and me, in this seeking process. About to ascend to heaven and to resume his place at the right hand of the Father, Jesus is commissioning his church, that's you and me, to go and to proclaim, assuring us that when we go, 
He will be with, with us always, even to the very end of the age. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed, the Lord accompanies us. And he, and he brings us. He brings us this gracious message that we now share with others. And with power through it, he searches and he seeks for the loss along with us, through us, and empowers us to go and to bring people to him and to know his truth, his love, his mercy, and his grace. Yes, where there is one flock, there is one shepherd. And we share this gospel in its truth and its purity with family and friends and neighbors and co-workers and schoolmates and this through our church with people all over the world, just as we're doing right now, electronically. The Lord accompanies us in this seeking of the lost, and he gathers them into his fold. What an awesome thing that is. Yes, Jesus is the good shepherd, and he has the Father's endorsement. Jesus is the Christ. Now, Christ is not Jesus' last name. That is his commission. It means that he has been anointed, he has been appointed, selected by God the Father to redeem us by offering the perfect sacrifice for us on Calvary's cross. Now, perhaps the best loved and best known passage in the Bible is that which clearly states Jesus' mission. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. John 3, 16. What makes you so good is a taunt that is sometimes heard when our, our competence is challenged. In the case of Jesus, the good shepherd, the challenge receives a very conclusive reply. Jesus is the good shepherd. Not just on one account, but on many, many accounts. And we, we who follow him publicly acknowledge all that he claims to be, now and yes, even forevermore. Thus says our Lord God, amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our under human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing... Hymn number 479 from LBW, verses 1 and 3. My faith looks up to thee. My faith looks up to thee, the Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be wholly thine. While life's dark maze I tread, and griefs around me spread, be thou my guide. Bid darkness turn to day, Wipe sorrow's tears away, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For me and for my salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For my sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The prayers of the church. Lord God, Heavenly Father, shepherd of our souls, we come before you as those who have been called into your one flock. We give you humble and hearty thanks that in your mercy you have fed us in the green pastures of your word. By giving us the knowledge of salvation through Jesus Christ, your son, you have led us to still waters that bring peace to our souls. For your loving and gracious care which you lavish on us and without any merit or worthiness in us, we give you thanks. We confess that we have often strayed like lost sheep, seeking greener pastures. Yet we know that you alone have the words of eternal life, which satisfy our souls. We have often left the paths of your righteousness to walk in the ways of this world, seeking our own righteousness. For forgetting that your son laid down his life for us so that we might walk in your ways, forgive us, O Lord. Give us the gift of your Holy Spirit in abundant measure, that we may have strength to walk in the paths of your righteousness. Renew in us the determination to proclaim to the world that you desire everyone to come into your fold. May the power of your Son, Jesus, which enabled your apostles to heal the sick and restore the crippled, still be manifest in our midst today. Grant your blessings to the leaders of our nation, in our church, and our state. Gracious Lord, we are in need of rain so badly in this area and in other areas also, Lord, and we pray that you would send this life-giving rain to this and all areas in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our members, our friends, and our family who are ill at home or maybe in a hospital or who are, are, are confined at this time. And also we want to pray for a, a prayer for Lydian's son-in-law, Roger, who is recovering from the coronavirus. And also for, for Lillian's friend, uh, Tutti, Tutti, who is recovering from cancer surgery. Lord, be with everyone who is ill at home in a hospital for Lillian's son-in-law, for her friend, Lord. Comfort them with your presence. Give your healing hand to them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for everyone who is going through this COVID-19 virus right now, who have may contracted it, and those for, who are also recovering from it. Lord, we pray that you would be with these people and bring them your healing hand. And also, we pray for the families of those who have died from this horrible disease, Lord, and that you would just comfort and be with them at this time, as they need to, to feel your grace and your mercy, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be with our leaders at all levels of government. Heal the sick and assure the lonely of your presence. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord, who taught us to pray that perfect prayer. If you will at this time, please join hands with somebody that is seated next to you or with you right now. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you joy and peace. And all God's people say, Amen. God's richest blessings for you. We leave now to serve him who first served us. See you next week.